I'm going to be talking about how the new changes affect the city council. Let me say that the charter defines the fundamental aspects about the composition and powers of the council. The charter drafting committee, of which I was a member, looked at all of these. We concluded that our current system of nine councillors, two at large, and the others from each of the seven wards was suitable for Northampton. We left unchanged the current two-year terms of office and the stipulations about the eligibility for the job, particularly that the councillors had to reside within their ward and that they couldn't be otherwise employees of the city. Likewise, we did not amend the council's basic role in city governance. The council would still pass any city ordinances, they would still adopt the city operating capital budgets, and they would still review the mayor's nominees for the city agencies and commissions. The council would still also keep the hands-off role in the direction of any employee of the city appointed by the mayor. That continues to be the mayor's purview. In all of these areas that I've mentioned, we've made no substantive changes, although we edited the charter for greater clarity and accessibility compared with the clutter of the current 1883 charter and its various amendments over the past 129 years. What we did change in regard to the council are the issues of council autonomy and contingency planning. In regard to autonomy, the proposed charter transfers the chairmanship of city council meetings from the mayor to the city council president. Currently, the mayor chairs the city council meetings. This is a strange breach of the separation of powers, and indeed, Northampton is the anomaly uh, among Massachusetts cities and towns. Uh, according to one former city councilor who testified uh, to our committee, the mayor's chairing of the council meetings undermines the council meetings, council members' sense of their own responsibility. It is time, he said, to give the responsibility and leadership back to the council. We agreed. While the council president would now chair the council meetings, the two branches of city government would still communicate regularly with each other and maintain a working relationship. The proposed charter requires the mayor to attend the council meetings when necessary. Furthermore, the proposed charter specifies that the council agenda be set in consultation with the mayor. In this case, there won't be any barriers to the mayor placing important city business on the agenda. In regard to contingency planning, the new charter creates a new position, the city council vice president. The vice president would handle the duties of the president in the case of temporary absences. In the event that the city council president were to become mayor and leave the council, the vice president would become the new council president. So those are the changes with regard to the council.